something on your face that you cannot figure out what it is? Is it an amelia? Is it a whitehead? Is it fungal acne? Is it pustule? What is it? So today I'm going to explain in detail everything. So go get a pen and paper because I have a lot of information and please stay until the end because otherwise you're gonna miss out so much. So let's get started right now. So let me introduce myself. My name is Maria from Vancouver, Canada, beautiful Canada. And uh, I would love to thank most of all my subscribers. The individuals that are there, they, some of the people have been there with me since the beginning. And uh, I am so thankful for their questions, for their comments, and for the love that I have received. For the people that do not know me, hopefully you are here because somebody gave you my, uh, my channel and you are deciding to say, you know what? I really would like to follow Maria. You can reach me on Instagram. And it's not that I want you to send you off to Instagram. It's only that on Instagram, you can send me your picture, what's going on on your face, and it can become a little bit more personal. And you get to know me and I get to know you. As you start watching my tutorials, and uh, listening to me, you will realize that I always focus on few little things. One is proper diet, eating properly. Number two, drinking your water. Number three, taking good supplementation. And number four, good products, skincare products. And I list below in my description box, my favorite items. So the first so, thing I wanna say is that I am not a doctor. But I've been in the aesthetics industry for over 40 years. And so I have seen a lot of things come and go. I am an individual that believes in nutrition. Certain things that happen on your skin is because of poor nutrition. Garbage in, garbage out. And I'm very particular about that, especially with certain skin problems. Let's talk about whiteheads. And uh, in textbooks, a lot of times, whiteheads and melia are named inter interchangeably, but it is not 100% accurate. And I have also sometimes mentioned melia as a whitehead. So let's clarify that more in detail now. So a whitehead are closed comedones closed pores that the sebum is trapped underneath a thin layer of skin. So when you hear this, you might say, well, Maria, that sounds exactly like Melia. But Melia is different, and we will talk about it in, in a second. So let's look at this. This is a whitehead. And you might say, but uh, Maria, that looks like pustules. Yes and no. Pustules are more inflamed, they have more bacterial problem, and this is a pustule. Pustules. Can you see the difference? These are very inflamed. I have another one here that are whiteheads. So why do we get these? Well, let's look at the skin. This is the uh, sebaceous gland and uh, a lot of times when this little gland is overstimulated it produces excess oil however if on the top here we have a uh, dirt and uh, it does not allow the oils to come out that's when we get the whitehead but you say well, okay this is a closed comedone yes how does the open comedone looks like and let me give you a diagram. So again, a sebaceous gland. And uh, this is a, an open comedone, which we call it also a blackhead. How, how can you recognize? These are huge blackheads. These are open comedones. There is a reason why you get them. So I'm gonna mention some of the products that you could use to help you, but the first one is do not 
overwash your face because if you overwash your face you're going to stimulate the sebaceous glands you remember sebaceous glands release the sebum oils okay that is the first thing also what you need to do is to do some scrubs and also but this is preventive because when you start getting uh, these like that if you use uh, scrubs you're going to cause irritation let's get this one again okay so if you use scrubs at this time it's kind of too late so we have to somewhat prevent to get to that point so if you use spin brushes like these ones here and i have a link below if you use uh, AHAs and BHAs, and I have uh, uh, the one that I like from Ordinary. Okay, now these are all prevented things that you can do to uh, prevent from the blockage of the opening of uh, the follicle. Sometimes you get this if you use products that are too rich for your skin, and you must drink more water. So let's water. talk about Melia. And I know I'm a culprit too. I have called Melia a whitehead, but uh, some of my uh, subscribers have said, hey, no, it is not. And they are correct. So what is Melia? Melia has nothing to do with the sebaceous glands or the sebum or the follicle itself, like the whitehead. The Melia basically are little protein uh, skin trapped underneath the skin. And so it has nothing to do to do with the sebum. And as we look at this a little diagram, it looks like a little pearl underneath the skin. Basically, it is uh, slowing down our cellular turnover. So basically, the skin is slowing down. How can we stimulate it? Well, by uh, drinking more water, uh, by doing massage, by stimulating the blood circulation. That's another way of doing it doing mild scrubs to stimulate again the blood circulation and do not use products that are too rich for your skin and that happens a lot of young individuals that they're putting too much rich products for their skin type and then they start getting these little milia individuals that are wearing glasses they might get milia um, uh, sun damage and also genetic I would like to show you some pictures. Uh, this is Milia. So now can you see that there's no really inflammation? They look like little pearls underneath the skin. And it's actually quite easy to remove. But if you're not 100% how to do it, go to an esthetician or a dermatologist that will help you. Now here again, why would this individual, young individuals getting all these? sound damage using rich products okay uh, here there is another one so you can see no inflammation I have a tutorial on how to prevent milia and also how to remove milia so go and look at it so you get clean hands disinfect your hands disinfect the area with just uh, alcohol you get a disinfected sharp needle or lancet uh, lancets you get them at a medical supply you stretch the skin quite nicely and then you make an incision right across the belly of the milia like that then you get uh, your hands and uh, cover them up if you want with kleenex and then you squeeze it out and a little pearl will come out oh you know, i know my tutorials they are always so long but there's so much information that i have to pack in into these tutorials before I move forward, after you remove the little milia, remember to disinfect the area, okay? With a little bit of uh, uh, rubbing alcohol to disinfect uh, the skin. Now, another thing, uh, a lot of individuals get confused between milia and serangoma. So this is serangoma. It kind of looks like milia, but it is not. This is more an inflammation of the pseudoreferous glands. And I have a tutorial, so let me show you the difference. This is milia. Can you see the difference? The milia looks like a little pearl, but the, the syringoma looks more like fleshy. 
So, so the next one is going to be the fungal acne or also called Malassezia folliculitis. And uh, this type of disorder is actually quite tricky to take care of. And I do have, yes, a tutorial on fungal acne and it's in detail, so please look at it. And uh, I have a couple of pictures. So basically it is a, a yeast overgrowth or infection. And uh, as you notice, they are like really, uh, they're, they come in clusters or bumps and uh, typically in a uniform size. Very good picture here. Uh, it it often, often grows in a warm area and humid climates, you can see here. Uh, so when you're in a humid climate, it, um, it makes production of more sebum and sweat. So if you are sweating a lot, you might get this. And so there's a lot of things that I advise, such as using apple cider vinegar and water, a combination of 50-50, and basically you uh, spray your skin. Do not use any uh, um, acids or scrubs because that will irritate more. Because However, of fungal acne, you have to use very mild products, not rich products that feed the fungus. So this product here called the Refresh Botanicals, it is actually a quite good product that you can use and uh, that will help with uh, your situation. This product is found on Amazon and I'll have a link below. And uh, I know that these conditions, they look very similar from uh, the uh, whitehead, the melia, the uh, cerebrangoma and the fungal acne. So hopefully I have uh, giving you a summary so you can understand and somewhat diagnose yourself. If you have any difficulties, please, please go to an esthetician or to a dermatologist that is able to diagnose for you so you know exactly what to do. Thank you so much for being with me and uh, remember to share this information and subscribe and I will talk with you very, very soon.